Peace. In the name of Allah, I'm Aubrey Muhammad. I pray that everyone is well. Hempstead family, friends, and believers, welcome to my live session. And uh, this family, this is just updates to what's going on with mom's situation and what's going on in Hempstead. I know I haven't been on here in like a year, almost seems like July. I think the last time I was in Village Hall uh, making statements about the development of Hempstead and about <clears throat> how we need to nationalize, cultural nationalism. Okay, but first it's just going to be mom's update and the situation in Hempstead and also um, planning a documentary. So I'll talk about those three very briefly because I'm actually over here at mom's place at the Woodcrest Oceanside. As you know, she was displaced from the Avalon Westbury last July. Many of you helped, you sent contributions, you showed up to court, and they did a switcheroo on her. They, you know, they evicted her, but we agreed not to be evicted by uh, agreeing to, to, to negotiate to move out, to negotiate to move out. And part of that negotiation was that she had another apartment. So she's here over at the Woodcrest Oceanside going through the same drama, the same trolling the same gang stalking and gaslighting. It's the same owners, Black Rock, State Street, and Vanguard. They own all the housing and institutions, even the hospitals and stuff like that, corporations. And they got teams of their people trolling you, just making your life uncomfortable to displace a lot of people. They're doing it here. They did it at Avalon, they're doing it here. They make it uncomfortable for you and when they box you in and with apartments surrounding you and they get the team of their people in there being a nuisance to drive you out. So when the, your lease comes up in the next year, you say, look, this is too much trouble, and they jack the rent up for the new people coming in behind you. If you notice a trend in Nassau County, that's how it's going. So mom was displaced from the Avalon Westbury. She's here temporarily. I'm here with her, supporting her. As you know, she had medical challenges. We still have legal battles and fights that we're dealing with Avalon with a state complaint and a lawsuit State complaint against here, Woodcrest, and a reconsideration for, I think it was HUD. I'm not going into the details, but it was like HUD, some other housing issues that ignored her. They sided with the owners. All of them sided with the owners. Even law lawyers would not do lawsuits against those owners. We caught a, a paralegal doing some, uh, some private work for us, and he even got chumped out. He's uh, coming up with excuses and explaining away and everything. Now, we're still going to do the lawsuit. So mom is displaced over here, just temporary. She's still in boxes and stuff. If you look in the apartment, you still see her out of boxes. She planning to move. She had other places, but they were like in Long Beach and Suffolk County. She couldn't move to Long Beach on the beach. There's a brand new luxury apartment there. I think it's the Breeze, Oceanside, uh, uh, Long Beach. Brand new luxury apartment on the beach. It's too cold. So we couldn't do it. A two-bedroom. We need a two-bedroom. Because she has helpers, home aides, doctors that come visit, all type of stuff, you know, for the home care because she has medical challenges. And as you know, she was, she had some, some injuries. She broke her leg January and she was supposed to have been released February. That should have been a month. She was at Mount Sinai. They had complications. The complications came from Mount Sinai. She had gastrointestinal bleeding. They famished her. She was like 80 pounds mass, dropped down to 70-something, but bloated up to fluids like 110. It was stuff like that. Then she was neglected and abused in there. She was in and out at that hospital. I got her out of there to Northwell, her and my regular hospital. But then she went into rehab in a few places, complications, gastrointestinal bleeding, on and on. And she was... She was treated mainly okay, but some stuff is like worthy of lawsuits, abuse, neglect. Yes, mean-ass nurses, evil. She's in the top rehabs in Nassau County. One was Bel Air, which was fine, except for the nurses and the doctor made bad decisions there. I'm not going to go into details, but uh, she was okay there. They just kept trying to hold on to her too long. She had complications. They had to go back to Northwell, the hospital. So she uh, went back to Northwell. We uh, kept her in Northwell instead of Mount Sinai again, which was just trouble. 
but then she went to a Rockville Center nursing rehab. 50 main, there's two of them there across from each other, the pavilion and the Rockville Center, the 50 main. It's the 40 main and 50. The 50, horrible, horrible, a little worthy of a lawsuit. Got her out of there. Uh, back to Northwell. More bleeding from complications, ne neglected overnight there. Got back to Northwell. I, it was so bad that I was visiting her every day. I, I visited visit her ever since she's been hospitalized and in the rehabs every day. To, it got so bad, I had to camp out with her for like two months. I camped out with her in the hospital in uh, Northwell. You know, they let you do that. In the rehab. Uh, Bel Air does too, but no, the Stern family at Northwell really let me camp out there. You know, there's complications there too. <laughs> It was okay. It was an outstanding rehab, but she had problems there too. I camped out with her. She had pneumonia, had to go back. And then both of us caught COVID. That's the first time. I, I didn't take the vax. <laughs> I did not take that vax. But since being in a hospital, you can't avoid it. Nurses told me. I, she, they said I had COVID three or four times. And then they uh, were still working. Why they had COVID? A nurse told me that. Doing them 12-hour shifts. And uh, some of them got sweet shifts and some of them, you know, 12 hours and they live locally and they get paid a lot from that. But they work with COVID and we caught COVID. So we were isolated. So I, I, that's when I really started camping out for almost two months. I spent like 18 to 20 hours a day with her. OK, camping out with her. And she's still neglected. I'm sitting here. I'm camped out with her, sleeping, take caring for her most of the time. Still neglected, abused and ignored. And one, uh, a couple of instances was bad, but one at the Northwell Stern family, that's on the Northwell uh, 300 Community Drive, their main hospital, uh, that Stern family rehab, which is outstanding, excellent, uh, had a nurse ratchet in it. Uh, you know, let me be blunt. M most of these new healthcare workers, the aides and nurses, yes, uh, Caribbean and black immigrant, different culture from us. And somebody from another, cult, another culture doesn't treat you right, doesn't love you, they tolerate you. But let me say this, some of her best treatment came from like Jamaican Haitian sister, Afro, you know, the best treatment that she had came from a Caribbean or African, you know, nurse those treatments, but the worst came from that too. And it wasn't a random, it wasn't rare. It was very, very impatient stuff and mean. One, I call her Nurse Ratchet. Remember one flew over the cuckoo's nest? Nurse Ratchet was with Jack Nicholson. He was acting crazy. There was a point in that film where she said, look, the doctors were going to put him back in jail. She sat in that meeting and said, no, keep him here. It wasn't because she liked him. Just because she wanted to talk. She wanted to haunt him. She wanted to torment him punish him. Mom had a nurse like that at Stern Family, y'all. This nurse, yes, she was uh, either Haitian or Jamaican, yes. Mean, nasty attitude, angry that she couldn't get mom, bend mom to her will. You know, my mom is demanding and stuff. You know, my mom is from, uh, we from North Carolina. You know, we pretty strong and stuff. And she was and mean. She got upset that mom wouldn't bend to her will and use the facilities the way she wanted her to do it. So she just got mean and vindictive and just, you know, setting up manipulative and setting up scenarios to bring harm to mom, to neglect her, benign neglect, ignoring her, knowing that other staff had to tend for her and she would intercept that other staff. Yes, I witnessed this myself like three or four times that I witnessed it and reported it into them. You know, I can't retaliate in there. That's in their base. If I retaliated, uh, so she was manipulating other workers under her to abuse and neglect my mom without saying it indirectly in a coward way. And I inter intercepted her one time. I said, are you mocking my mom? Are you doing it? She denied it. That's what cowards do. But she was like that. And they chided her, reported her and stuff. The most I did was report them, you know, just to the high staff, the social workers and stuff. But you find social worker team. They had stern families, an outstanding rehab. But you got a nurse ratchet in there. You have other people with attitude. Looking down, snuff, snapping, they smacking their teeth, rolling their eyes, impatient with our people, our elders. 
Mom had panic anxiety attacks. She had depression. Sometimes she's up in age, 81, been through a lot. Coming from North Carolina, up here to 61. That's a lot down there, coming from there. So in this up in age, when you start losing all your senses, you get a little dementia. She's slightly, you know, she has a, a moments of dementia. Slight cases, she's very good though, doing outstanding in regards to being stable. But she got worse in the hospital, in rehab. So the nurse neglected her, bottom line. So uh, that's, that's almost where they lawsuits. We're looking into that. That's what happened there. She's back home, stable again. again. I didn't even announce it last month because it was a wrecking ball of a transition. She's supposed to have more help, the home health aides. You got to appeal that, get that done. Other people were helping. Before that, she moved. We had to pay people to care for her. Twenty, thirty dollars an hour. Can't pay them to care for mom overnight and stuff like that and at home. And we're looking to have her, you know, insurance do that now for the full time. But they, you know how they are. They give you a little, a little more. You got to appeal to get more. But she's stable. She's in her room now. And if you hear her <laughs> crying out for me or calling me, you know, I have to interrupt this and bring it to an end. Because it is about her. You know, you young, born a baby in this world, is mama to care for you. And that baby is born helpless, depending on the mama, mainly. Mom, that's the first teacher. And then when you're going out in this world, you yourself take on those characteristics of a baby, of a helpless baby. You need help. Some people can't use the bathroom. They can't eat by themselves. They can't move. They can't walk. Sometimes elder infirm. You want to be independent doing stuff on your own? When you retire, because you don't want to, want to be in a relationship, don't want children and stuff like that, well, you're dependent on this nursing system and this uh, rehab, but mainly the nursing and those retirement homes where if you ain't got buco cash, and even then, even then, we went to the best ones and you still would get neglected and abused and manipulated. Remember, the deep state run those things too, BlackRock. In Vanguard State Street, they own most Wall Street firm own all of this now. That's why they monopolize in healthcare. Northwell, Mount Sinai, who was at NYU, they're gobbling up everything over the last two decades, and they have their ops in there. Clearly, yes, they do. Now, uh, she's home. Everything is stable. That's good. We're looking to get her, uh, you know, back uh, re to healing and restored. That's our prayers. Healing and restoring. We appreciate y'all for helping her out. But we have a lot more to go because we're looking at legal action, y'all. It was at that level in some instances. But overall, it was good, even outstanding sometimes. But still, it is what it is. Now, because I'm being brief here, uh, number two, uh, in Hempstead, all right, they have the gentrification going full steam ahead. Some people have been asking me, Brother Aubrey, I haven't seen you sitting in front of this fish place on your stool. I'm sitting on the stool here <laughs> with, the, with the Final Call newspaper. Well, you see me in Village Hall fighting against the injustice and the racist gentrification and displacement and devitalization of us in Hempstead from the Village Hall getting involved. They're knocking down the village. The hell, you worried about me being out somewhere where they're knocking the whole damn downtown? They're knocking it down. 300 acres at a downtown. They're knocking it all down to make it a white city, a, a white college city with a luxury Sands casino next door. They want it to be a, a white city, a white yuppie exclusive city. And you sitting up here worrying about appearances. No, we have to fight this. We need to, you need to come to Village Hall with me, support what we're doing. And in the, in the following weeks, especially this summer, I will be announcing my run for mayor. I will be doing that. And I'm going to need your support. But who cares about the donation? Who cares about your verbal? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, even if you vote, your voice and your presence must be known. You got to come to Village Hall. They're knocking down the whole downtown. You're being displaced by the thousands. And something horrible has happened in Hempstead. Over the decades, and I've noticed the trends, I've been going door to door in the community for decades. I know Hempstead, I know us. We've already been displaced. Native black Americans, black people from the South, that built the country, foundation of black American freedmen. We have been displaced in Hempstead by the thousands. There's a lot of immigrants now from Africa and the Caribbean, and they're just social climbing, and they're a buffer class of replacements. And 
Whalen, Mayor Whalen Hobbs is openly allowing Central American migrants to come in. They've been doing it for decades. They've been shoving this in our face for decades. And the school board and the Hempstead Village board have been on board with it. They have enabled it. it they could have stopped it. I would have stopped it. I'm a nationalist. I'm here for raising us up to getting us on top, getting us stable, get, enhance our lives, enrich our lives. Then we reach out. Then you reach out. So in Hempstead, y'all come and let's get this thing together of our, of our cultural nationalism and taking charge of our community. Okay? That's going on in Hempstead. An announcement will be in a couple of weeks. Uh, and the third announcement is I want to form a documentary. I want to do a documentary, uh, cut the check, reparations now. Our reparations movement for Native Black Americans, Native Foundational uh, Black Freedmen, ADOS, as to those of us who built the country, been here for centuries, built the country for nothing, for it to be an open door for others, and now open borders. Biden is blatantly doing it. Now, hypocritically, oh, I'm going to close it now because it's close to election time. And he reads, well, he can't read anything because he's demented and uh, a crash dummy. What we do is we have to set the basis for what goes on in the community. Others are. And they're displacing us and they're doing it bad, right? So the gentrification is being focused on us. For hundreds of years, we've been displaced. Well, for over a century, we have been displaced. So how do we remedy, remedy that? Reparations, 800K to every Native Black American. We need to fight for that. Help me with the documentary. Because also in that documentary, I want to focus on, as I run for office, and support my run for office for mayor, for being effective. I want, I'm taking steps. I'm taking actions. These are, key, these are action points. These are bullet points. These are shots fired. This is, this is action. This is in the road pole, rowing. This is getting things done, boots on the ground, kicking in the door, black boots stomping it in. I want to run for mayoral office to get legislation in the village for reparations, to make it national, a, a national reparations bill for 800K to each native black American. That simple. Also, uh, anti-black hate crime bill specifically for us to get that in. And we need to form, not only will I do a local run uh, with an independent party, an independent black party, we need a national black party, a Freedmen's Party. And the documentary is going to be based on that, uh, those main steps, and more will be uh, included. And I would like your input. If you would like to input in the documentary, contribute. We'll put it on like, uh, give me some ideas, a GoFundMe, the Indigo, or uh, Kickstarter. Something like that, you know, those crowdfunding to get the documentary done. Because uh, I have to interview people. You got to pay people for this. You got to, you need uh, rights, licensing, film, images, video. Uh, and also to get that documentary out in the public to, to push the legislation to the points uh, that we are focusing on, to have that documentary be a boost for it and be a promotion for it marketing it for it. We can do it. Let's raise the money for it. That'll probably be like a, a hundred K, maybe 200, something like that, depending on the people involved, depending on what's involved. We'll find that out later. But we really want to get that kicked off because our reparations movement is being undermined. They are so-called Afrocentrists, so-called Pan-Africanist organizations like INCOBRA, undermining Native Black American uh, FBA, ADOS, Freedmen, reparations in America. They're making it race-based, knowing that's unconstitutional. It gets, it gets uh, killed. It gets uh, tabled and then killed immediately because it's, it can't be race-based. It has to be lineage-based. And what's lineage? Those of us that have been here for hundreds of years and built the country for nothing. So how is it in COBRA? They're ops. They're control ops control ops in our community, and it's a few others. They have to be confronted. They have to be exposed. These people got to be shown of what we stand for, what we want, and what we desire, what we demand. And then even we got to do boycott. We got to do strikes. We need momentum. We need the movement. We can do this. 
uh, join us in a reparations rally next week in Washington, D.C., the FBA reparations rally. Please join that and support that. And go check out the movie Microphone Check. Get the DVD. That's very important for the culture. Also, uh, in the reparations, the ADOS reparations rally, that's happening very soon. Support these movements. Let's do it all. Let's bundle it together. We can be a mighty fist and make an impact and fight for the freedom and liberation of our people. Because we are Native Black Americans. And we, and we are being swindled. We are being, we are being shysted again. They're, they're displacing us and replacing us. <laughs> yes, they are. It's being done right in front of our eyes. And the uh, Congressional Black Caucus, the NAACP, Urban League, they, these, they're working against us. They're not working for our cultural nationalism. That empowers us. We take charge of our communities. There's so much we're going to do in Hempstead. But I need your support. We need to do it together. I will represent you. I don't represent myself. I represent us. I represent the culture. I'm a cultural nationalist. I make it happen. We need to, uh, we need to produce our own cryptocurrency, create our own value, get our own stocks in the village, create our own precious metal coin, allocate it to every uh, resident. What they got now in Village Hall, open borders. It's just an a, a open whorehouse. He, Waylon Hobbs and that board and the school board, all of them, they leave the gates wide open. And the claim is progress for us when it's not. It's only progress and jobs for a few select people in the village. We got to end this. Help me. All right? I'm your brother, Aubrey Muhammad. I pray that your day is well. The summer is here. Let's get out, y'all. I was going to Eisenhower Park. They got the cricket thing going in there. It's a lot of things. It's going to be a lot of noise. They got traffic cut off. I'll go by there and see if it's open. If not, I'll go to Hempstead State Lake Park. And I may go to uh, Lincoln Park. Kennedy Park, I don't know, that's too crowded. Kennedy Park's a lot of distractions while I'm talking. But Lincoln Park is a little more quiet. And other than that, family, this summer is on. Support me. Look for the uh, fundraiser for the documentary, Reparations Now, Cut the Check. And look for, for my uh, political campaign. And we're going to do that all this summer. we got to take steps. To help our people. We got to make the movement. We got to seal the deal. And let's do it, family, to enhance our lives for our babies. No one else is going to do it to create a future for them except us. All right, family. It was good talking to you. I'm, I'm, look, I'm glad I updated everybody on mom. We got a lot more to do with that, a lot more legal challenges. And we need your support. And I support you, okay? All right, I'll leave you as I greeted you in the ancient Arabic words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace unto you. Have a blessed evening, evening, joy the rest of the weekend. Peace.